Now, with that said, I'm going to ask everybody to just give closing remarks. Brother Fire Bingy has given his brother Minka. You, you got, you, is going to give. So, if you can, please just limit your statements to 60 seconds, and then we're going to just conclude. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll try our best, um, brother Minister. It's great to hear the youth um, stepping up and stepping forward. Okay, on um, our level, right? Ken will probably say some bits as well. A lot of what you're talking about, we've already started in acting, okay? When I, when, what do we mean when we say that? It's taken us nearly three years to try and get into the schools in and around, um, or we're about to get into the schools. Our thing is, know the law so you don't break the law. When we first sat down amongst the police, me and Ken's thing is, we want st stop and search scrapped, period. Because it's now at the stage where sus was. Yeah, we call it stop and scarred in North London, in Tottenham, where we're from. We've put forward that we want community-led initiatives. So basically, you've got to come to the table with a blank page, and we've got to fill it in, the community. So we're going to come back to you, because we're going to need your support on that, and we're calling it fair engagement. And we're going to dictate to the police the way we want to be police, as well as... Yeah, as well as what Akala is saying, because even if you look at all the other races, they have their structure, yes, their organisation, but it still has to work within a framework of the overall um, um, politics in the country. As the brother says, we can't have just one strategy. We have to have the strategy where we go in amongst them, and we also have to have the strategy where we have our own, so that when we are ready, we can fully be able to take control of our economics, of our politics, of our education, and more importantly, of our children's future, okay? But the first point of it is getting to the state where we are empowering them with the necessary knowledge that they will need to defend themselves in the 21st century. That's all I've got to Thank say. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brother, yes, sir. We're not, we're not going to jump over mother. Mama. Are we? No. no. So please, mother, please address us. I've just got to say that we have got to stand together yes. because unity is strength. strength. That's right. And we can make it. It's a hard right. struggle. But we'll make it. That's right. We got to be determined and courageous. And 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 the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has taught us, you know, we've practically tried everything. But the only thing we haven't tried is unity. Unity, unity. Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's thank right. our mother for yes. her presence and her counsel. Okay. I just like to say that I'm one of the few people that won my case against the police on a stop and search. Yeah, um, right. That's right. They paid, right. They paid, £20,000 they, they gave paid, me. They paid me out £25,000. <clears throat> okay. Now, let me say this much. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 no, I'm on it. But I, that was in 2009. Within six months, I spent it just in case the police came into hearts for some. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, but anyhow, moving on from that, what was important is, is that the work I've been able to do since that time, this happened in 2000, the incident happened in 2004. I got paid that in 2000. And since that time, to give you some sex story, to say that you, what you can do if you do get organised, there's a thing called Section 60, it's a public order act. And what they used to use, they used to use a blanket thing, where is that you don't matter who you are, you could be in the, as long as you're black and you're in the area, they will stop and they'll stop and search you with no excuses, right? And and they used to abuse, used, used to abuse it. What happened is one day they abuse a mother. Who was who? Oyster card was in the pound in in in, in the red. But anyway, it ended up that she she was a, a beat, arrested, beaten up, and then she lost her job. We we, we she came to me. We took her. Uh, we, we went to court to say that uh, Section 60 is racial profiling, and at, um, and when the police see just how loose that they were about to lose, as you said, when you go to these high courts, you see them having about ten barrister, with the other side only having one. And these are all top people, okay? And what's happened is, is that because of the, what we've done, they now have reduced the number of Section 60 stop and search in the last six months by 95%. So, so but, no, but let me tell you this much. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what have they been doing since 1996, the abuse that they've been doing with that? Give you one other example that what happened with a lot of youngsters. They get the first of conviction on stop and search. That's right. And it's either uh, um, section five, a knock on the fence to say that, oh, you swore at me, or more seriously, 
assault and police. Now, two young persons, quickly speaking, 19 and 21, they were outside the mother's house when they got attacked by plainclothes police. They got beaten up, gassed and assaulted. Then they got charged with assaulting the police. They went to the magistrate, they got fined guilty. But the magistrate had to find them guilty, but they only gave them a 50 pound fine. They came to me, we appeal it, went to the Crown Court, they've won their case. Now they're on their way to getting something like 100,000 pounds each. But hold on, hold on. But listen, and and hold the hold court on, and the judge on, said, and the judge said they shouldn't listen to us after we did What the judge said, the judge said to them, now that you've got your good name back, you shouldn't go and deal with stop and search people. They're too radical. Right. Instead of telling them, now you've got your good name back, go and sue those people who will try to take your good name from you. So I'm just showing you, these are the things why we call it now, over the last 40 years, that they've left, a, a, a bad stop has left what we call this stop and scarred. You've got to understand that it's, it, it's, it means it creates barriers. That, that only that the wicked can, can really grow. Wicked on both sides can grow. And even though they're minority, we have to do something to, to climb up to make it uncomfortable for them so where the majority can live in peace. And that's where I'm coming from. Excellent point. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Because brothers and sisters, there's, there's, you know, there's no value we can put on a credi credible name. And once someone destroys your name and your character, it's very difficult to repair. So what brothers are doing in helping our young people save. to save their character is invaluable. So another big, well-deserved round of applause to our brothers. We'll come to the last question. Brother Minkus, some closing words. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that um, just to, to touch on a very important point that was raised earlier on in the discussion today in terms of what true justice is. And it seems to me that as an African people, we've got a seat within the context of us determining our own destiny. And even go further, as um, go further to, to, to comment on, particularly as, as an African community, as, as Martin Luther King says, that you know, I look forward to the day in which a person, his, his children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the contents of their character. Now, no matter what we say, none of this is going to come into being unless we have some kind of power. And I think that the, the point in which Akala raised is very significant and fire bingy, because this comes within the context of historical organizations, and we've got to draw upon our histories like the Black Panther Party. That's right. Okay, that we, we've got a history of pushing back this terror that what we're facing. I want to say that there's many organizations in this room here today, the Global African Congress, the London Campaign Against Police, and state violence, campaign for truth and justice. Many of them, I hope, before people leave, Nation of Islam, um, I hope when, before people go, they really do speak to some of these organizations because we need to, to get involved, we need to be supporting these organizations on the ground. We came here today looking around at the issue of this in custody, and again, we can have as much demands as we want. If it's not backed by the power in our community, yes. then it's not gonna happen. We spoke about the Mark Duggan case, we've got the case of Derek Dennis family is in, is in the audience. We've got Asher Senator here's good bridge in Smiley Culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've right. got a lot of pain, but we've also got a, a strength if we pull mm -hmm. these different forces together. Now, we're saying within the United Friends and Families campaign that in the case of Mark Duggan and in the case of black people as a whole, what we've got to say to the state in a very forceful way that the police is not above the law because at the moment they treat it as if to say that they are above the law. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute disgrace. If anybody that's gone to the Mark Duggan inquest would have seen that there's so much evidence to indict these killers. It shouldn't even have gone to an inquest in the first place. It should have gone straight to the Crown Prosecution Service and it did go there. But the fact is, is that it went there, and according to them, there was not enough evidence. Everybody goes to the inquest, know that's a damn blasted lie. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. power is the issue that what we've got to confront in terms of making sure that these people are accountable. And through the Unite Friends and Families campaign, we are, we are bringing together the various different families, put a demand that charges be put against many of these um, police that's killed our, our loved ones of our community and in particularly the Mark Duggan case and what we're saying failing that 
we're, we're calling for a private prosecution against the killers of Mark Duggan because we, think, we, we, we know that the case is, we, we know the evidence there is overwhelming. But again, brothers and sisters, it's not going to happen unless we have the backing and the support that you are here. And I just want to end on that point. Thank you, Mika. Thank you very much.